I'll give you a, a little bit of a background as to how I fit into the David Trimble and I suppose John Hume story as well. In 1996, I was a 22-year-old law graduate um, with a keen interest in politics. Uh, David had just been UUP leader for a bit less than a year at the time when I convinced him and Daphne to, uh, to give me a job working for him as his PA in Belfast. That job very quickly mushroomed into a much bigger job uh, as the talks process began in June of that year, 1996, the talks process that would ultimately lead to the Good Friday Agreement two years later. So I was at uh, David's side at probably almost all of the key moments of that process, taking notes, giving advice, learning at the sharp end of politics and what life was like at the sharp end of politics at that time. And it was very fast moving. I would go on to become Director of Communications for the Ulster Union's talks team. So that, in a sense, meant I was dealing with the world's media um, who were all looking at that stage at Northern Ireland um, because we were a subject of great interest with international attention. I was then appointed as a special advisor to David in July of 98 after he had become First Minister designate and I was with him for the following four years uh, as we set up the various institutions. We got Stormont up and running, we got the North-South Ministerial Council, the British Irish Council, and all the machinery of the Good Friday Agreement at that stage. So when Tim asked me to speak here today, there was three sort of areas he said to me to talk about. Can you talk about David and his legacy? Uh, can we talk about where we're at at the moment and what his mission was in politics. And also to the young people here, um, what are the lessons we've learned from that time in our history? So I'll give you a quick overview uh, of David Trimble for some of the younger people here who probably have only seen him in news footage and uh, news clippings and everything else and may not know an awful lot about him. David was born in 1944 in Bangor County Down. Um, he spent most of his academic career uh, at Queen's in the 1970s and 80s, where he was a law lecturer, where he also met Daphne. Um, and his big break in politics, he was always involved in unionist activism or on the fringes, of, certainly, of, of unionist politics at that time. But his big break came in 1990. Um, when Harold McCusker, who was the MP for Upper Ban, passed away with cancer, David stood in the by-election and was elected as the MP. Five years later, he was elected as the leader of the Ulster Unionist Party, and three years, just three years after that, both he and John Hume would negotiate the Good Friday Agreement. So whilst we know quite a lot about his life as a politician, um, he was also a devoted husband, father, and later grandfather. Um, people often forget, and it's something that gets to me at times um, when I see people in politics, the families of political leaders, like John Hume and David Trimble, suffer a lot. They have to give up an awful lot of the time they spend with their families because of the dedication they have to put into the jobs they have to lead. And I want to say, and I wanted to say today, that it's very, very important to remember that beside both of John and David were their wives, who were equally strong and equally committed people in this equation. And I can say to you for a fact, there would have been no Good Friday Agreement without Pat Hume and Daphne Trimble. So what drove David to, to do what he did? Well, I suppose, like all of us, it was a desire to end political violence in this country. He wanted a political settlement that would bring 
all sides together in Stormont. He wanted new north-south arrangements on the island of Ireland that would command the support of unionism and nationalism. It sounds a strange thing for unionists to say, but we always felt in the Ulster Unionist Party that if there was to be all Ireland cooperation for mutual benefit, then that was good for everybody. He wanted to build a new form of politics across these islands through the British Irish Council. He wanted all of the administrations and the various governments of these islands to find new ways of talking and cooperating with each other. And I think above all, he wanted to give young people, including his own children, a future to be able to live their lives without fear. So what was the big mission? Well, David's uh, probably keynote speech of 1998 was made in June of 1998. It wasn't made, certainly wasn't made that night in the Waterfront Hall, and it wasn't really made in Oslo. It was made in June 1998 before the Assembly election that followed the referendum into the Good Friday Agreement, when he declared that his mission as First Minister was to raise up a new Northern Ireland. He wanted to see society here transformed, at ease with itself, where violence would become a thing of the past, where sectarianism and division would be replaced by respect and cooperation. I think we've gone a long way to achieving that. I think he would agree if he was here today as well. But we also know there's a lot more work to do. It's my own view that the Good Friday Agreement is a 50-year project. It's a two-generation project. And why do I say that? Well, it's my view that it will take two generations, two generations, two 25-year cycles, for our society here in Northern Ireland to move on from the trauma of the troubles and our violent past that existed before 1998. So we're halfway through the project. Since 1998, uh, we've seen new power sharing in place. We've seen a new beginning to policing. And we've also seen a new era of economic prosperity for Northern Ireland. Since 1998, our GDP in Northern Ireland has doubled to 48.3 billion. Our tourism industry in 1998 was worth about 220 million of revenue a year. It's now a billion pound interest industry in Northern Ireland. And we also have another achievement in Northern Ireland, one that's very closely connected to devolution. That is, we generate about 50% of our electricity here from renewable energy which is one of the great success stories of devolution, because that was driven by local politicians. Forget about RHI. I'm talking about the actual delivery of energy. So what about the next 25 years? Well, we need Stormont back. Everybody knows that. I believe it will come back, and if you are listening to talk back as I was this afternoon, it could be back within days. So hopefully it will come back soon. But if we're fully to realize the opportunity of 1998, I believe, I genuinely believe, the next 25 years will be the best we've ever seen in our lifetime in this country. But to do that, the new leaders of Northern Ireland will have to be just as bold and as brave as the leaders of 1998. They're going to have to be just as bold and brave. So what are the lessons that I take and we take from certainly my time in politics and working with David? There's a lot of lessons that we learned. We didn't get everything right, but we got a lot of things right. We certainly did a lot of good in our time between 1998 and certainly in the early noughties, when David was the leader of unionism and John was the undisputed leader of nationalism here. I think one of the first things I would say is, to anybody in politics or anybody in life, for that matter, even when bad things happen, good things can come 
from the most awful situations. And political leadership, like life, is about the need to stay focused and to keep moving forward, no matter what. When the LVF shot Philip Allen, who was a Protestant, and Damien Traynor, a Catholic, two best friends, in Points Pass in March 1998, it was a watershed moment in the talks process. I don't think we fully realised it at the time, but it was. We'd been talking for nearly two years at that stage in the talks process, and the truth is we hadn't really been getting anywhere. But I think the SCLP and the Ulster Unionists very, very clearly decided in the aftermath of that, and there were many other things happened in the early part of that year, but in the aftermath of that, we resolved we were going to give everything we had to try to get a breakthrough. Six weeks later, we had the Good Friday Agreement itself. And now, I suppose in the years that, that followed, I learned from talking to Mark Durkin and listening to him that when he saw the image of David Trimble and Seamus Mallon walking down the main street of Points Pass the day after those shootings, Mark saw the vision for an office of First Minister and Deputy First Minister. And within months of that horrible event happening in Points Pass, both David and Seamus were voted in to those positions. The other event of that year that I will draw our attention to, and we, and we need to, because we always need to be honest about our past. For all of its horror and devastation, the Oma bomb of August 1998, four months after the Good Friday Agreement, was the most horrific reminder of the futility of political violence in Northern Ireland. People from all walks of life from all sections of society, some people not even from this island, as we know from Spain and other places, were caught up in that awful event. It was as if all the ghosts and all of the evil had come back in one seismic event to say to all of us here, is this the future you want? Society here said no, and we came together and we rallied and we got things moving at Stormont, and we eventually got devolution up and running. So what I want to say, especially to young people and the future leaders of this country, is this. Don't give up on your dreams. Things will happen in politics and in life, but you've got to keep moving forward. The other point I want to make, and there's two other points I want to make, is don't ever, ever take our Good Friday Agreement for granted. The Israelis and the Palestinians are living proof that conflicts don't stop unless people on both sides are willing to compromise and willing to respect each other's rights to exist. So don't ever allow anyone to diminish or dismiss the importance of the Good Friday Agreement here. And there are people still trying to do it. Be thankful for it and be proud of it. And the final thing I will say to you is, especially to young people here, be faithful to the legacy of Trimble and Hume. When you go out into this world, and you will, many of you will travel, and you will work in other places outside of, of Ireland. Always be a force for good. Be a force for reconciliation, be a force for justice, for problem solving. Fergal talked about it earlier. We have plenty of intolerance in this world. We need people who find solutions to problems. And I am not just asking you to do it for David and John. I am asking you to do it for yourselves and for future generations that will come after us in this country. Thank you for listening to me. So I wish you all a happy Christmas, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. God bless.